Hey everyone, I thought I'd do a video on our van. We get heaps of questions about it and that's probably fair enough. It is unique and this is going to be a bit of a chat through uh, how it is that we came to own it, some of the great features about it, some of the things that are still in development. Uh, I've got a walkthrough that I'll stick in here as well uh, and then a chat about how we use it for a family of five to do a lap of Australia. So how it is that we came to buy it, um, I'm a researcher. So when it comes to big purchases, I spend a lot of time doing the research to figure out exactly what's the best thing for us to buy. And when we knew that we were gonna do the lap and it was time to upgrade from our camper trailer, which we had, to a caravan to do the lap, uh, I started going through all of the available options. And we had a bunch of criteria, the weight, the size, um, off-grid capa off capabilities. Um, I wanted a good kitchen. That was one of the things that I was really uh, stuck on. I wanted to be able to cook. I wanted to be able to cook outside. Um, we wanted to be able to live outside as much as possible and a bunch of other things, uh, be able to go off-road, stuff like that. So threw it all into a spreadsheet, came up with a bunch of options. And this was one of the ones that we'd seen online. Uh, at the time, it was a developmental prototype and the designer, James, um, he was looking for someone to pick up the design and mass produce it. So hopefully he hoped that Jayco or Coram or the New Age, uh, someone like that, would take the design and uh, go to production scales and quantities to make this. Unfortunately for him, um, when he was pushing this was late 2019, early 2020, and he ran into COVID. And his day job is running an accommodation business down in the Barossa Valley. Uh, and he got hit pretty hard by the travel restrictions as so many other businesses did. And that meant that he needed some cash and he decided to put this up for sale to, uh, to get him through while the revenue was low. Uh, so I saw on his website, which I've been following since I love the design, um, saw on his website that they were selling the prototype, gave him a call, we had a chat through, and um, after doing a little bit more research and getting him to show us the van virtually, because the borders were still closed, uh, we ended up saying, yep, that's the one that we want. And we agreed on a price uh, and got it sent up across the state borders from South Australia to the ACT where we were at the time and parked it in our front yard. Uh, and that's how we ended up with the Hutt RV. In terms of the design, obviously this bit here, the kitchen and the deck is the, uh, it's the feature. It's what got us across and I said before, I really wanted a good kitchen. And this is what uh, pushed us to, to get this. So it was probably the biggest thing that pushed us to get this. So the, you can see there the deck uh, lets us, it sits on the tailgate and it lets us cook out of the mud, um, but still be outside, still feel very much like we're outside and that we are truly enjoying the outdoors experience. Uh, that bit there is James's design. It's painted or there's a patent pending here in Australia for it. And then this bit here, so the actual body of the van itself, um, that was built by a fabricator, well the whole thing was built by the fabricator, but it was the design for the fabricator down in Adelaide, where James got this built uh, as the prototype. And the company called Wilmax, um, when we were looking to buy it, I actually called Bill, the owner, and chatted through the design and all of, all of the stuff that he'd done to put it together. So, uh, that, this part here, that bit there, that's Wilmax, uh, their design, and they've put James's part, this bit here, the deck on the front, onto the front. And that's how the design comes together. Um, as far as the kind of the data about it, the statistics about it go, so from the front of the drawbar uh, there, all the way to the back here is almost exactly six metres. Um, the actual body itself is a little bit shorter and obviously when the front folds up, um, you've got the drawbar there, so the body itself is about five odd metres long. 
the weight, so the tear is 1750 or 1780 and the ATM, so it's max all up weight, is 2,500. If you see behind me, you've got the wheels, dual axles right in the center there, and the weight is almost perfectly balanced over those. So it's got a very low ball weight, it's only 140 kilos, despite being 2,500, and the way it is here with full water, full uh, food and all that gear, it's just under 2,500 kilos. Um, but when we, uh, if you were to, fold it all up and um, swing the kitchen back in as she's traveling. Uh, I can almost maneuver it just by using the drawbar and picking up the drawbar and moving it around myself. Um, so it's really, really well balanced. And a lot of that comes down to how efficiently and how effectively they've balanced the weight over those two wheels. Uh, 300 liters of water. Well, in theory, 300, uh, one, three 100 litre water tanks. Uh, in practice, there's about 85 litres of usable water in each one. So a bit over 250 litres of usable water and uh, about a 70 litre grey water tank, which keeps it soft grid for ages. Um, there's plenty of storage for food. On top of the roof there, two 160 watt solar panels. So 320 watts of solar, which is feeding a or two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Uh, it had AGMs when we picked it up and given that I knew that we'd be pushing the batteries pretty hard during this trip, uh, decided to swap those out for lithiums. Uh, got some GVs off eBay, the Voltex ones. Uh, I know there's a lot of varied opinions about those, but I've got to be honest, so far they've been excellent and glad I made the switch. Um, you'll see there's heaps of storage on it and you'll see inside it's a, a really good design um, there is air conditioning it's only available with 200 watts uh, sorry 200 amp hours you can imagine we don't link it up through an inverter so it's only available when shore plows shore power is plugged in um, and in here as you'll see there's Weber barbecue uh, there's gas hot water, which is fantastic. Uh, just a Julka hot tap, which is stuck on the outside of the kitchen. And uh, some other nifty and clever little features that you'll see as we go through. So that's it in a broad overview. Um, now I'll jump across to a walkthrough that we made a couple of weeks ago. And then at the end of that, we'll come back and just chat about uh, some of the positives and some of the things that, because it's a prototype, probably still need development. So, you see here, this is the van. This is it all set up and uh, we're living in it at the moment. So day three here at Sandy Cape. Um, if you come around, starting at the front, so running a McHitch, Company unfortunately has gone out of business, but the hitch itself has been fantastic. And then that uh, is on the all aluminium chassis that you can see here. This is obviously the piece de resistance. So here we've got the, the deck and the kitchen. And a quick wave from Evie. Hey Evie. Hey. <laughs> Thanks kiddo. Um, so the deck, aluminium deck for saving the weight and the kitchen. Um, we've got the aluminium frame here for the actual, for the canvas itself. I think they tried to do a couple of different things with the roof and what they've settled on is having this, uh, the canvas frame that folds down and the so the canvas uh, cover that folds down on an aluminium frame. The kitchen itself. So one of the best things about it that we really love is the bench space. And you can see that the kitchen, they've obviously thought through the kitchen. So shelving, uh, some shelving to keep the kids out, so medicines and our first aid kit and that kind of stuff. This was a microwave and 
This was a microwave uh, and we've converted it into a pantry, so heaps of food storage now. Um, there is 240 under here, only when we're connected to shore power. Uh, and under here, you've got uh, 12 volt and USB. Two burner SMEV and uh, Dometic bar fridge, pretty sure it's 110 litres, but don't quote me. The drawers are amazing soft closed drawers so they stay locked when we're traveling which is great and we've just got it set up with utensils pots and pans and a pantry uh, another key innovation which is really clever is that the sink slides in under here and you kind of think well that sounds like a hassle but in reality it's not a hassle at all and it's really handy because it gives us this much extra bench space in a small spot and then when we're not using the sink slides back out of the way and uh, gives us a little bit of extra storage during the day or bench space during the day which is great under here we've got uh, a little bit of extra storage and these canvas panels that are around here uh, they go there while we travel and then this is for just cleaning materials and that kind of stuff so kitchen essentials so a fantastic kitchen we've been really glad uh, that we've this is where we ended up and it's obviously this was the centerpiece of the design for the van and I think they've done a really good job if you have a look down here so just down at the floor you can see here a little bit of non-slip stuff which seems out of place until you realize that behind this door Is an ensuite. So the canvas, this piece of canvas uh, attaches to this door, and you saw it attached to this door here. And when you open the ensuite door, it folds out, and we've now got an enclosed private ensuite where this is 100% waterproof, just polyvinyl. So any water on the inside just goes down and hits the deck. If you have a look inside, So it's got a full shower and toilet set up uh, with hot and cold water for the shower. And the floor that you saw before is actually sumped. So that goes straight down into the grey water tank. So when you're having a shower, uh, any of the water just drains straight into the grey water. If you're off grid, you can retain it in the tank. And if you've got uh, grey water facilities where you are, then you can just drain it straight out. The toilet is standard Thetford. Uh, cassette toilet it's actually plumbed in so there's no separate water tank so whatever tank uh, whatever water we've got in the main tanks goes straight in onto there and you can see that we've added a little bit extra in terms of uh, some of those shelves it has been surprisingly uh, efficient so we've had a couple of showers in there we tend not to have too many but mostly to retain uh, to save water and there hasn't been too much of a problem but it's private and you can probably see the one downside to the ensuite, which is that it does take up space in the kitchen. Um, from my perspective, it's a compromise. We've managed to save uh, about six feet of actual space for the caravan itself, given that it's all up, it's six meters and we use that entire space uh, when we are set up and when we're traveling it's only about four meters long so uh, what's that about 12 feet 13 feet that comes at the cost where when we're using the ensuite it does come out into the kitchen but as I say it hasn't been that big of an issue we've never had it where we're trying to balance the space between the ensuite and the kitchen uh, generally if we're cooking we don't use the ensuite and when it's the time of day that you're using the ensuite people aren't cooking so that makes life that little bit easier. Um, the other good thing about this kitchen that we found to be phenomenal. So as I said before, we were looking for a hybrid and we found this one, fascinated by it and obviously ended up purchasing it. And I'm so glad that we did because every other hybrid that we saw, looking back now, had the kitchen on the outside, which we wanted. We wanted to be able to stand in the kitchen. We wanted to be able to interact with the outside and enjoy the fact that we're camping. 
uh, while we're cooking. And But we didn't want to stand in the mud. And obviously having the deck here up on the drawbar keeps us out of the mud, which is great. One thing I didn't consider, and now I'm so glad this is where we ended up, is that when you're in Tasmania or you're in Southern Australia and a cold front comes through, uh, it's Scottish rain. It blows in slightly side-like and sometimes entirely side-like. So we've been up here in some awful cold fronts, particularly in South Australia, and you can put canvas walls. We've got two canvas walls that go around the kitchen here. So they'll come down and they'll attach from here. And there's another canvas piece that goes up here and uh, it attaches to the roof. And we can be fully enclosed inside our kitchen area and it can be blowing a gale outside and we are warm and cozy and dry. And that alone has justified the way that this kitchen is set up. Had we got one of the outside kitchens in a hybrid, we would have been out in the rain trying to cook and it's cold and I don't like the cold. But here we are, windproof, mostly waterproof, but when the weather's cracking days like we've got today, we're gonna have the canvas down and be cooking in the outside. It's awesome. Let's have a quick look inside. So again, I'll just uh, throw the lights on. So again, they've thought through so much in here. It's phenomenal. Um, quite a nice space. And if we look kind of from the back to the front, so king size bed and to reduce space during the day and give you a bit of extra living space, it slides in and out. And if you just have a look up there, you can see under the, uh, our pillows there, the mattress itself folds over. So there's a seam in the mattress where you can fold it back and forward, and that gives us a full king size bed. Um, under here, a little vanity piece put in by the original builder. So this is a solid oak um, table that it slides in and out and stretches all the way out into here. These benches, double up as bunks for the kids at night. So two benches and there's space under here so they can kind of have their head under here and their feet down here and they fit me. I can actually fit, uh, particularly on this bench, it's about six feet long and I'm about six feet tall. So if I really wanted to, I could actually sleep on one of these benches. And uh, so far I haven't been, haven't been sent to the doghouse and had to sleep on the bench, <laughs> but I could if I needed to. Under here, three storage drawers. So we just use these for clothes, my clothes, Jin's clothes, and the kids, uh, the two younger kids down here. This does double up as a step in theory to hop up onto the bed, but in practice, we've kind of found it doesn't work that much. And we just use one of the benches as a step. And then uh, our eldest daughter's clothes, you can tell which one is the teenage cloth area because it's all just kind of <laughs> packed in there. It's awesome. A couple of Sirocco fans. Uh, 12 volt fans, very efficient, and they keep us going. And a Dometic aircon, which we've just recently had replaced because the last one leaked and shorted out, and I was afraid it was going to set fire to the place. So we've managed to fix that. Under here, you see under each bench, we've got oodles of storage. So that goes all the way back uh, to the bulkhead up behind the bed. So you can fit three of these storage tubs and a little bit extra. And under this side, which I'll just lift up carefully. Uh, again, storage all back through here, water tank selector. And then this is our electronics. So that's where the batteries are, the red arc manager, um, some circuit breakers, that kind of stuff. So again, really clever design. Uh, Last thing probably worth looking at is just the, the panel up here. And this is just uh, a miscellaneous panel. So some USB 12 volt power, uh, AC power when we're connected, uh, our water gauge, the Red Arc Manager, and we've got ourselves a wonderful Bluetooth stereo system that we use on a regular basis. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> and of course the, uh, the storage that we've got uh, hanging off here, which is kind of just miscellaneous storage. And our lap so far.
Mm -hmm. Doing really well. Um, More hooks. Oh, yeah. You can never have too many hooks. Never have too many hooks. We have hooks on the other side there. Actually, probably uh, something else that's worth noting. Which? Oh, so I just go back up. So we're next to my side and Jin's side of the bed. We've got little shelves. We've got USB and 12 volts so we can charge our phones overnight, which is great. We've got reading lamps. Uh, there's another lamp up here which is really energy efficient, which is good because the ones that we've got on at the moment are not. And, oh, these windows. So having windows next to our bed for airflow during the night, big windows for the van. And then of course, there's also extra windows up here, which just add more light and uh, airflow for when we need it. So, that pop top really makes a difference. If you, the roof is there, exactly there. Uh, so my head just touches the roof when we lower the roof. So having it up here is obviously good for uh, when it's warm and raises it up, we can get the airflow across with the canvas, um, but we can still come in here when the roof is down and you can still, in fact, we've slept in here when the roof's down. Not ideal, but we can do it. Um, but having that pop top is fantastic. All right, I think that's about it for inside. Let's go back outside and continue the tour. So the outside living area. So we'll just cover off on the bits of the van. So in here, LPG storage and a little bit of extra storage that we've got. This is our Fiyama, I think that's how you pronounce it. Fiyama, Fiyama, potato, potato, uh, bin, if you haven't got one of these, you should get one of these. They are fantastic. Don't forget the shoebox, essential for me. Ah, yes, a shoebox, traveling inside, and our, our little mat to try to keep some of the sand out of the van, not very successful. Um, this bench, another wonderful idea, just having a bench outside the van has been fantastic. So this is usually the first thing to go on and the last thing to come off when we set up. And above the wheels, you can see, uh, and this is on both sides, we've got that storage, a little bit of storage in there that we just use for miscellaneous items. Coming down a little bit further. So, uh, oh, up the top, light, LED lights, and our speakers for outside. In here, Weber. Winning uh, on a slide tray, so that comes out. Little bit of storage underneath, and you can see here, these are the canvas walls that we've got for the kitchen. And we'll go around and we'll see the storage on the other side as well. Under that, more storage. You can never have enough storage. Uh, this one we use for the mat, uh, the kids' swimming gear, and we've got a... Um, Gazebo. gazebo, a little quick setup gazebo that's here. And this bit of the storage here actually goes the whole way through. So it's almost like another tunnel boot right at the back at the bottom. Um, standard stabiliser legs around the back. Neighbours with excellent choices of music, it's good to see. So full reverse camera as we're driving along we can be watching what's going on behind. It's actually got reversing lamps, which are pretty handy. And then our two spare wheels, spare tires, um, complete with storage bags under there as well. If you have a quick look under here, you can also hopefully see built-in recovery points. And we can go through the bottom of the van a little bit later. Coming around on this side. So there's the other side of the storage. In here, we use these solar panels, which are out at the moment. Uh, Leveling, we've got the fire pit back there. Standard storage kind of stuff, really, Starlink. The other side of the other one, so hoses, hose bags, that kind of stuff. And there is more storage in behind here as well. That's the water tanks. Uh, more storage over the wheel arches on this side. And then we've got an external solar input, um, 
and the 240 input as well, 15 amp. And then, same as on the other side, just the gas bottle. And for us, on this side, my favourite job, the uh, toilet cassette. And this is the back of the kitchen. So when we travel, this is where the deck folds up onto here and it covers up and protects our hot water heater as we travel. Grey water, and you can see here, the grey water comes down and just goes in. This pipe goes into the grey water tank and that's how we can make sure that when we are off grid, we're retaining all of our grey water out of the kitchen sink. Well, the bathroom just uh, goes straight through the sumped floor and into the grey water tank. And gas bay in it. So yeah, that is pretty much uh, the tour of the hard RV. So far, it's been a winner. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of the van through that walkthrough. Some of the great ideas that, uh, that James and Bill came up with when they designed this and uh, some of the things that are a little bit frustrating. So to start off with the good things, I mean, obviously this deck is just amazing. Um, everywhere that we go, people stop us and say that's such a great idea. Having the deck with the kitchen um, and being able to live outside but cook and be out of the mud and be um, away from like, even just getting your feet up away from the sand flies and that has just been so good. So we bought it, we're happy to tell people, we bought it for the kitchen and we made the rest of it work for our family. And that's pretty much how it's been. Um, I can't imagine swapping out that kitchen for anything else anymore. Um, the love the design inside with the, the table underneath the bed, the big king side bed up on top um, with the, the twin fans and the twin reading lights, the power uh, next to where we sleep so we can charge our devices at night. It's little touches like that that really make it a bit of a home. Uh, and having the benches underneath for the kids and as you saw in that walkthrough, big enough that I can sleep on there. So they're not just uh, token benches. They really are designed for kids to sleep on as well as be um, that efficient use of space for bed and bench uh, and that table, which is really, really good. Um, I love the storage. There is so much storage on this thing. And uh, for a family of five living on the road, that's so important for us. I love the way that it's balanced. The weight balance and the dual axles is excellent. Um, I said before, I can kind of move it if we absolutely need to. Um, and it also means that when we're doing off-road kind of stuff, uh, uh, it, it just kind of floats on sand, on the soft stuff, uh, over the corrugations, it floats really well. So I think that's been a really good part of the design. Um, the, the water, Having 250 litres of water, I think, uh, for staying off grid is also excellent. The actual quality of construction is really, really good. Anybody that sees this agrees that it's built to be tough. Um, the, the chassis is really strong and the fact that it's all aluminium keeps that nice and lightweight. So uh, there's a lot of really good things about it. The ensuite, um, Having that little ensuite on there is, again, just a lifesaver for us at times where we're off grid or you need to be self-contained to stay at certain places. And being able to use the ensuite um, without having to put the canvas walls up. The canvas walls for the kitchen are another thing that just, thank you so much, James, for thinking of those. Um, when we've had those cold fronts come through and the wind and the rain are coming in sideways, you'd be miserable cooking even in that kitchen um, with that weather but as soon as the walls go up and they only take five minutes to put up and straight away um, you're warm uh, and you're comfortable and you're still cooking in there and it keeps that cooking like the oils and the smells and that out of the main living area which is great. Um, those are the really big ticket items the things that we love and I love that it's only 2500 kilos so we can tow it behind uh, or with a Hilux. Um, in terms of some of the things that I improve, first and foremost, I would not have the water pump 
outside the body of the van, I would have had it either somewhere in the kitchen would have been ideal, um, or failing that kind of on the other side of the floor where the batteries are or uh, in one of those storage areas under the benches. So we've definitely learnt that that is something, and in fact, that's probably gonna be uh, one of the big reasons that I don't wanna tackle the Gibb River Road. Um, it's not the only reason where we've made the decision not to do the Gibb based on a few factors, but one of the reasons is water crossings with this thing and knowing that that water pump is gonna get saturated, uh, I don't wanna take that risk. Um, another one, so these actuators, you can see just there, um, we've had two of those break. Now that's not a, a slight on James or Bill that built it. It's the, the company that makes them, obviously uh, didn't make them to last forever. It's still been pretty frustrating to have to take them out, uh, send them down to Melbourne, pick one up and get the other one shipped back to us to be repaired and then have to make the repairs ourselves. So uh, that's been something that I think they could probably, if this ever does go to production, um, something that could be done a little bit better. Um, the, the table is excellent. It's such a great feature, that lovely big piece of wood, but it's heavy and you could probably save 25 kilos if you had that a nice light aluminium sheet or something instead or even just some ply or MDF or something but it wouldn't look the same. Um, James fully admitted it was a vanity piece for him, he wanted it in there because it looks great and it does. Um, I think if this ever goes to production then they'll probably do something a little bit different there. Um, personally I would have liked to have seen more solar, I had to add a solar input on the side, on the other side over there that you would have seen to make sure that when we're parked, like today, you can see the shade over the van. Um, so to make sure that you can get enough solar to recharge the batteries during the day. Um, I probably would have thrown in an inverter, but these are all kind of low on the priority list. We've just got a little portable 500 watt inverter that we attach through an Anderson plug on the inside and that seems to work fine. I think if you wanted to utilise that kitchen in the way a lot of people do now by having appliances, coffee machines, that kind of stuff, then you probably want to go for a bigger electrical setup, which again, you could fit under um, one of those benches without too much problem. Um, those are probably the, the big ticket items. This, the canvas setup at the front is generally pretty good. Um, in high winds, uh, it does need to be strapped down or you need to use the walls to stop the canvas from flapping up at the top, um, which is not, it's not that big a deal. Um, and for us, it would have been great if we could somehow fit another bunk in there, but uh, overall it's actually worked really well for us just to have the rooftop tent on top of the Hilux so that this one, the eldest, has her own space uh, and uh, a teenager has her own little retreat, so that's been good. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the, we're gonna chat to James in the near future, provide him some of the feedback on the design, and fingers crossed, uh, this will actually go into production at some point in the future. Now, uh, I think James would prefer that somebody picks up the design and productionizes and, uh, and makes it work. Um, I also think that there's an opportunity for low rate production uh, with the fabrication team just to build kind of bespoke and custom designs using this deck and kitchen idea and then changing this to suit what people need. Uh, I think this is an excellent baseline for what it is, um, but there's obviously scope to lengthen it, maybe have a bigger ensuite on the inside, having a a door. In fact, there's probably two things that you could improve as well. Um, the first one is having a door on the outside so you don't have to open the kitchen when you leave your keys inside, as I tend to do on a semi-regular basis. And the other one is that swinging the kitchen out over the deck at the moment, it's just on um, like a Teflon runner over the deck itself and it can be quite difficult. Um, I think if you're going to sell this to, certainly to Grain Nomads, 
um, you'd need to have this running on a bearing or something like that to make it a little bit easier. Um, but if he goes in a low rate production, these are things that can be improved. And if it gets picked up by someone to do um, a proper production run, then they'll probably come up with some ideas like that themselves. But overall, the Hut RV for us has been fantastic. Um, if you see us out on the road, please feel free to wander over and have a look and provide your thoughts. We can pass them back to James if he um, gets a chance to sell the design on. Uh, otherwise, the, it's always good to have a chat about how you can improve the way that you're camping and doing your trip, your uh, block around the lap. All right, cheers.